Hello, and welcome back to the Minecraft Toy Box. Or maybe just Minecraft Toy Box. I'm not sure yet. We'll call it that for now. So, it has been about two weeks since episode one. A little bit longer than I would have liked. Um, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, episode one, episode one. Might I say that I was actually very, very surprised with the reaction to episode one. I... Had my doubts going in, um, not about the series itself, but I wasn't sure how people were going to react to it. I was kind of set on people not liking the idea, you know, the whole command block thing and everything. But, um, you know what? People reacted very, very positively, very supportive of the series. People said they really, really liked the idea of the, the whole command block thing, which I was very, very, very uh, um, excited because, like I said, I, I wasn't expecting people to really like it that much. Um, but I'm very, very glad that you do like it. So, we're not going to be working with ZF too much today, but nevertheless, we do have a pretty cool thing in store. So, um, yeah, the door's changed a little bit. Kind of playing around with wood instead, because, uh, the thing is, is that we kind of had, we kind of had, like, an idea for what we wanted to do, but then we're kind of, like, changing our minds on things. Um, and... I almost feel like I don't want to make it look too industrial, because um, that perhaps isn't the look I'm going for, but um, yeah. So yes, this room's changed a little bit as well, and uh, we're still in that we're still in that stage where we don't really have very much to our names, so this is basically all we have. We have a bit of stone, some more stone, uh, some bits and bobs, and we have our valuables as well. But that's not important. I do have the materials required for what we've got planned for today. And like I said, it is pretty... It's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited for it. And let's get on. Okay, so what are we going to be working on today? So I wanted to get this... I wanted to do this quite early on. Not for any particular reason, but I just felt like it was one of those things you need to get out first. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working on a teleportation system. So teleporting is a pretty, one of the most basic commands out there. Um, but as I mentioned last episode, I don't want to just uh, do, I don't want to just do something really basic. I'm not going to just um, literally set up a command block to teleport me somewhere. That's that's not how, how I see this going. And this isn't how I'm going to approach um, any of my creations in this world. I want to do something a bit, well not a bit, considerably more creative than just that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing the laws of teleportation. All right, so let me introduce you to the laws of teleportation. So as I just said, this isn't going to be uh, just a, a simple command button to a command button, uh, a command press to, to teleport somewhere. There's, there's more to it than that. So we've got these laws. So what these laws are are basically rules that you have to follow in order to teleport from one place to another. So let me explain how it's going to work. So there are two, there are going to be two types of teleportation. There is main teleporting and there is branch teleporting, okay? So um, at our base, so this area is our base, we're going to have a main teleporter, so a main teleport pad. So let's envision this with the cobblestone. So that is the main teleport pad. So what we're going to do is basically scattered around the world. So we're going to have teleport pads around the world where you can teleport to. And these will be called branch teleport pads. So let's say we have one over here. Well, imagine these are bigger. They're obviously not going to be this distance apart because that'd be kind of pointless. <laughs> so we're going to have one at spawn. So that's where our, um, our crafting table is. And we'll probably have them other places that are long distances away from where we are. So let's say we have another one over here. It's up there. Okay, so here's our main one. Here are two branch teleporters. So the main teleporter um, is the most powerful teleporter because it's it's the main teleporter. So the main teleporter can allow you to teleport to any of the branch teleporters. So if I go on here, I can teleport to either there or there. But if I'm on a branch teleporter, which is a lesser teleporter, it's a more simplistic version, if we go on that, it will always take us back to the main teleport. So we can't go from this branch to the other branch. So imagine it like a tree. Um, you have to travel back to the, the trunk of the tree 
to go to a different branch, if you're following me. However, these teleports are not going to be free, because I am very much in the mindset that nothing should be free. Nothing in Minecraft is free. If you, if you want to dig a big hole of dirt, you're going to need a shovel, which has durability, so it costs you the, the materials to make it, costs you time, but it also costs you a shovel eventually. And I'm very much in that mindset. So these teleports are not going to be free, um, especially this type of thing, because I I feel teleporting is is quite powerful and it should just not be free. So what's going to happen here is every time you want to use a teleporter, it's going to cost you one iron ingot. Now, we don't actually have an iron farm on this server, but if we ever do, then I'll probably change this to something else because I don't want it to be something farmable. Um, obviously, an iron ingot is farmable, but seeing as we can't attain it from um, an iron golem farm, um, that's what it's going to be for the time being. So this has absolutely nothing to do with what we're, we're doing today, but I came across this and I sort of had to show it. Look at this thing. Look at this mountain. Look at these mountain ranges. This is, that is like... The, that is such an impressive mountain. That's like one of the best mountains I've ever seen. It's not like that it's absurd. Well, it is absurd. It's amazing. I suddenly feel the need to build a big fortress to defend myself from Zedef. I don't know. I don't, oh, man, that, that mountain is just... Look at it. It's just its amazing. It's, it's really, really lovely. I, I would love to do something with that. Okay, you know what? I just need to... I need to stop being impressed with this with this world because just there's just too much impressive things. This is amazing. Like it's like literally three peaks. That's wonderful. But you know, I've actually had a little bit of a think whilst I was walking. And by the way, the reason I'm walking is because I'm looking for cactus, but um, I haven't found a desert yet. Um, there is there is actually some um, some relevance to all of this. So partly the reason that we want um, part of the reason why we want you know teleporters is because. You, 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 you might possibly have like encountered the situation where you have explored a bit in the world and you found some really, really nice places. Um, but you just can't decide on where you want to build your base. Um, of course, you can build multiple bases, um, but there's always the main one. Um, and that was kind of the thing we wanted to sort of... Actually, I should sleep. <clears throat> Something I completely forgot about. I should not be uh, wandering around in, uh, in the wild. Um, there's a lot of fire up there. Um, yeah, something I want to do is we kind of want to... To kind of incorporate, to kind of meld s different bases together. Well, not different bases, but different places together. So, um, you know, we have our main base, but then we might have, like I just showed you a minute ago, and that big mountain, which might be an extension of our base. So it's not geographically close to it, but with teleporters, we can kind of um, link them together so that we can kind of have a very big large a base that sort of spans lots of different places a little bit difficult to explain but i know what i'm talking about um but yeah that's kind of what we want to do i mean i do like i do like the whole having to travel to different places to get places but then i also like the idea of this is a nice place it's too many nice places this seed i like this seed a lot but um yeah i i i i, I want to i don't know i want to be able to f feel like the world is all unified and stuff you know i know i've gone off topic for a little bit here but um i kind of just had to celebrate here i have looked for ages okay so i'll show you my coordinate i am at minus 4500 i have traveled thousands of blocks thousands of blocks it's taken ages to find i've been looking for a desert there was none anywhere and then just as i was like going okay i'm going to turn back because i don't want to go too far uh, according to my eye, I saw this place. I found a mesa biome. Um, it's kind of a weird mesa biome as well. Um, but it's a mesa biome nonetheless. And if you can see in the corner there, the top left corner, there's some cactus because it's a mesa desert, I suppose. Um, but I've actually kind of hit hit gold here because I also needed hardened clay for stuff. Um, and this is kind of the best, the best bit of luck. So I'm very, very happy I found this. I still need to go all the way back, but, you know... I found a messer, um, and I didn't even know there was a messer anywhere close by. Oh, this isn't close by, but, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm just very glad to have found this. Man, this trip is just really paying off. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but if you look very closely, so top left again, there is an ocean monument here. There's an ocean monument, so I'm not going to go 
approach it. Um, I'll leave that for another day. Um, definitely going to do that with Zedith um, at some point, but we're going to leave that for now. Uh, but yeah, so we've... <laughs> this is a good day. This trip doesn't... Because I was, I was thinking this trip was... Uh, was 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 beginning to get pointless but yeah we found a mesa and we found an ocean run right next to it so that is really really cool really really happy and i even see the elder the elder the elder guardian over there but we're not going to approach it we're gonna just head back home all right so here we are again at our base and you may have already guessed that this is the location that i'm going to be building the teleporter i just like this area so i'm going to build it here um, and something I didn't actually mention earlier that I forgot to mention um, in regards to the rules is that you can't actually teleport somewhere unless there's um, a teleport pad already there and that you have already physically visited the location. So if I wanted to teleport um, over to that, that little island over there, then I need to have physically visited there and there needs to be a teleport pad set up there. Now, I might break this rule a little bit whilst I'm troubleshooting and setting this initial one up. But uh, once I've done that, then I will respect that rule. And, um, yeah. Okay, so I've set up some very basic foundations of the main teleport pad. Um, now I'm not going to show you me building it, because that's just meh. Um, but I would like to talk about the, uh, the colour palette that I've chosen. So if we take a look in my inventory, I'm going to be using some yellow stained clay, coal, and, uh, light blue stained glass. Now I actually got this, this colour palette, um, from one of the submissions into my galaxy contest. So... Uh, somebody by the name of Dark Dagon, I uh, might be a guy, might be a girl, I'm not sure, but Dark Dagon uh, actually submitted quite a few um, entries into the competition, and uh, they were just all really, really nice, but I particularly liked this one, um, purely for the colour scheme, I just thought it looked really, really nice, and I hope you'll agree with me, um, I'll show you in once I've uh, actually built this up a little bit, but um, this is going to look really quite cool. All right, so we are basically done um, for the, the building part. We're, we're not actually quite done at all yet, but um, let's take a look at it. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks a bit like a banana from this angle, I'll admit, but um, it's like it's not actually quite completely done, but it is done sort of, um, and I'll, oh, I'll get to it in a minute. Um, so this is what it looks like. So it's got the yellow, it's got the coal, it's got the uh, the blue glass, and there's actually some cyan, um, cyan, 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 it's cyan, cyan, cyan stained clay beneath. Um, and in the centre here, we're going to place a diamond block, just because I think that looks good. Uh, place a torch there as well. Um, now, I feel this kind of looks best from a distance and also uh, from above. So kind of when we're like here, it doesn't look too great, I'll admit. But um, that's kind of why I've built it here, because it's kind of in this sort of enclosed little area. So it's quite easy to, to look down on it. So let's go up this hill, for example, and we can actually look down at it. And we'll see that that is what it looks like. I like it. I'm actually happy with it. Um, still got a bit of stuff there missing there, but um, not to worry. The next step is to make this thing functional because at the moment it is literally just a build but we want it to be more than just that so I've actually already dug out an area beneath it so let's go down there uh, hope there's no mobs nope no mobs now um quite a spacious area but uh, what I want to do here and this isn't completely to do with this project but across all projects that I do on this map um, I want to make an effort to make the the behind the scenes, like the redstone, the command blocks and everything, I want them to look good. Because um, maybe you do this, I know I do this all the time. Uh, you do the redstone and you make the redstone like, obviously because you don't typically look at the redstone, you kind of just sort of half ass it a little bit and, um, you know, cobblestone everywhere, dirt everywhere and it just looks really bad. But I want to make a conscious effort this time to make everything look good. Alright, so I have set up some of the command blocks. Not all of them, they're not all here just yet, but uh, a good few are here. Uh, now I know I said just a second ago that I'm going to try to make everything look nice. Um, that's a long term, that's a long term plan, it's a long term goal, because uh, I can't quite do what I want to do in this episode, simply because I don't have the materials to make this look good. Uh, but I will do it eventually. Um, it's a long-term plan. 
So before I explain how all of these work, uh, I need to explain one more thing. There are going to be situations, and this is one of those situations, where we're going to need to spawn in blocks. Not using give, but like a, a set block command. Um, simply because that's how the circuitry works. So, in order to not technically be duplicating items or spawning items that we don't deserve, what we're going to do, what we've decided to do, is when um, some kind of circuit requires that, we're going to place a container, such as a chest, and within that container, we are going to place the blocks that we're spawning in, okay? So, for example, this, uh, so this, this, this circuit right here requires one redstone block and two redstone torches to be spawned in using set block. Um, so we've placed those in this chest and uh, that's basically to signify that we, we have earned those resources and it's to kind of um, to mark them as dedicated to this circuit. So for example, if we need to spawn in for whatever reason a block of wood, well, we can't just say well, there's a block of wood somewhere in the world. We have to specifically dedicate that in a container or similar. All right, I am going to walk you through exactly how this works, step by step. So we start over here. So up on the, the teleport pad, on the diamond block, there is a wooden button. When somebody presses that wooden button, what happens is a redstone torch is set here, okay? So then, uh, and by the way, I have actually created a scoreboard objective called TP underscore counter. Uh, we basically decided that when it comes to the scoreboard, um, it's okay to just create those because basically it's not an actual thing. It's just kind of just information. So we figured it's okay to just create scoreboards as we please. Um, so what we do, once that torch has been summoned, what we do is this command block right here will set any player in a radius just around the diamond block so in the center of the teleport pad to a tp counter score of one all right so then what we do is we actually delete that torch that redstone torch right there so that it doesn't exist anymore um so we can't like come down and steal it or something because it's gone in an instant so then we uh what we do is we come over here and we execute on a player with a TP counter minimum score of one. So only people who have just pressed the button are in the, the search radius. And we use a play sound command, mob.guardian.elder.idle. Um, and basically that just plays a sound effect to any players who've just pressed the button are in the, the radius. And then what we do is we, um, again, we add a score, add a point in TP counter to any players who've pressed that button. Then we have uh, three resident repeaters here for a delay. And after that delay, what happens is this command block will um, ex again execute at a player with a minimum score of one in TP counter. And what that will do is it'll actually set a another redstone torch over here, okay? And basically what the, the purpose of this is, is to basically loop around. This is kind of a method to, so that I didn't have to uh, keep using loads and loads of command blocks. So because there's like a repeatable task, which is uh, play, because I, basically I wanted the, the, sound, the sound effect to play, so I wanted it to loop around, but I didn't want to have to use six play sound commands. So it just loops back around um, using the same circuit. So it spawns in the redstone torch here, which is then over here, promptly deleted with another set block air. But then the circuit just loops back around, okay, uh, six times. So once it's looped back six times, this circuit here will actually stop working because it's only detecting people with a, a TP counter score of six and under or seven and under. So once it gets to seven, the TP counter score gets to seven, what happens is we set block, a redstone block, over here in this spot. And then what we do is this one will just promptly delete that redstone block like I'm showing you. And then what happens is um, over here, what we do is we clear a player with a TP counter score of minimum seven. And we clear them of one iron ingot. So in, this says zero, zero right here because I've just been testing it for, 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 for fact, if it works properly or not. But that will actually 
properly delete one when it's properly set up. Uh, and it will actually clear an iron ingot called Mesa. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and once it's done that, if that's successful, then it will teleport a player with a counter score of seven, um, one block on the X axis. And then it also deletes, uh, not deletes, but it resets the score back to zero. So that's entirely how it works. Um, it's fairly simple, but it took me a while to, to, to figure out properly. So let's take a look at it in action. It's not really anything at the moment, but we'll look at it nonetheless. So we press the button in the middle. Two, three, four, five, six. And then we're teleported uh, one block. Obviously, it's not going to teleport us one block in the final product, but that's just for demonstration purposes. As you may have gotten done, as I was showing the command blocks, I actually set up the iron ingot with the name Mesa. So the initial plan was to set the first branch teleporter at the spawn. That's where the, the, the command crafter is. But then I figured it might be more worthwhile. It might be more useful to set the first one up at the mesa biome because it's, I don't know, we don't have a source of hardened clay. It's one of those blocks that tends to be used quite a lot. And it might be a good idea to set that one up as the first teleporter. And also it's really far away. Been scoping out the area a little bit. And I've discovered that this mesa is quite messy. <laughs> Mesa messy. Uh, yeah, it's not particularly great looking, um, but I found this little cove. It's quite nice, um, and I think I'll build the, the branch teleporter right here. Right, everything is now functional. It works. I can now teleport to and fro. To and fro? Was it to and... I don't know. To and fro. To and fro. So I've built it over here in this little uh, hideaway. I don't know. I kind of liked that it was sort of protected by the mountains kind of like the uh, the main one um this actually used to be a water a water a water little lake you can see there's water down there oh i shouldn't have done that oh no uh but i had to cover it up and that took a little bit of time um but yeah it's here now as you can see it's a it's a scaled down version of the, the main teleporter. I used black wool here. I might replace this at some point. It's just that the coal is quite an expensive material and I didn't really take that into consideration really, but um, we use black wool for now. Um, so how this works um, is I press the button and it will teleport me back to spawn. Now I've actually set up the cost to be one iron ingot called Mesa. So it costs one iron ingot called Mesa to teleport. I'm almost thinking whether it should be more expensive than this. I almost feel, you know, because this is like 4,000 or so blocks away, I almost feel like one iron ingot is too cheap. But then again, if I made it something like 8 or 10 iron ingot per, per trip, then that seems almost too expensive for, for what it does. I don't know. Uh, but let me show you in action. I'll press this button. Uh, if I can press it. Glitches, glitches, black, and I'm actually teleported back to the uh, the main the main teleporter, and I can do the same to go back. So just go. Oh no, you have to be in the middle. Three, four, five, six, and we're teleported once again. I want to do one final thing for this episode. So we have both noticed that these teleporters aren't particularly flashy. They are pretty much just static buildings, and I don't want them to just be static buildings. I want them to look good. I want them to look impressive. I want them to be alive with motion. I want them to have little details, animations and stuff, just to make them look cool. Um, now, I can't do all of these in this episode, but I do want to get started. And we're going to start with something I have already planned. So you will have noticed the shape of this teleporter. A little bit of an unusual shape, but it's shaped like that for a special reason. So between the two points of the uh, little fangs or whatever they want to call them, what I want to do is I want to create a little electricity motion to make it look like it's transferring energy from one point to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. And when it's up and running, I'm going to show you in action. It is done and it looks so cool. It looks amazing. So let's take a look at it. Mm-hmm, that's what it looks like. 
Simple little animation, but it just adds so much more to it. I'm really, really happy with it. I think it looks amazing. Hope you like it. I plan to do a lot of these types of things around the world, just small little details that just would not be possible in usual survival. But I think that marks the end of this second episode. Tell me what you think of the series, of the episode, or whatever you want in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.